So today I'm going to go over a handful of Godot tips that I wish I knew sooner, and I felt rather stupid for not knowing them, but they were completely mind-blowing in the moment when I finally realized I hadn't been using them. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe and let me know in the comments. So first off, the inspector does math for you. You can multiply and divide things right in the inspector. Also, you can duplicate nodes with Control D. But if you duplicate things that have a resource, like a collision shape has a shape resource, they will be connected, and you'll be changing both of them, unless you go over to that resource and make it unique. So when you have a sprite, you can easily put a sprite sheet in the texture and just change the amount of frames that it has to get the image that you want. But I've always found this very difficult in the texture rect to do the same thing you have a texture here, but there's no animation tabs to zoom in on exactly what you want. So what you need to do is actually use the Atlas Texture, which is basically using a region of a texture, and then you can decide what you actually want to keep. Don't forget to click Expand. So when you have a Raycast, make sure you always enable it if you want it to do anything. And also, Raycasts work really well when they start outside of a collision area and go into it like that but they do not work that well when they are already inside of the collision when dealing with the color tab don't forget that you have this droplet thing to pick up a color from wherever you want you can pick up the green or you get the black so you can get exactly the right shade that you want also when dealing with the color you have this button here that will switch from this six digit identification to the RBG normalized numbers, which you can copy and paste and then put into your code. Now, when dealing with the script, you can always control plus or control minus to zoom in. You can also use control K to make things commented or uncommented. You can grab entire sections and tab them over or shift tab them back. When you want to make a nice readable list, you can always tab over to the next tab, and then you can tab up to it and continue to make a very readable list. So whenever you have a pattern like this where it's just the number changing, it's really easy to use placeholders to shorten this up so you don't have so much garbage to look at. And what this set get function returns is just a simple number, so we should be able to easily get an integer back. Now, unfortunately, these start at 1, so I will have to add 1 to my string, which I'll show you in just a second. Instead of making this silly array that is completely unnecessary, we can use this placeholder. So I took the last digit of these off, and I put the percent sign %s which will be replaced by what's after this percent sign, and we'll take the texture, and like I said, it starts at 1 instead of 0, so we need to add 1. Now this works great up until 10, where the if you have 10, it'll make this into a 4-digit number. So what you can do, instead of having just this, you can erase both those zeros. So now we're going to replace this whole digit, but when you have 1, it won't put zeros in there unless you add pad zeros. This will return three numbers every time, and if it's only 1, it'll go 0, 0, 1, and if it's 10, it'll go 0, 1, 0. So with placeholders, I also found it nice that you can put the placeholder into a string and then add the variable to it later. So I make this string, and then I call upon it in this other script where I decide randomly how many items I'm going to actually need, and I can end up with this string right here. The last thing is match statements are a lot more flexible than I thought they were originally. You can match multiple things into one category. So this is saying if it's a 0, 1, or a 2, now, if you put those in an array, it's going to be looking for exactly that array. You're looking for an, an array with a 0, 1, and a 2 in it. But if you don't put it in an array, you can just have it look for any one of those digits. And you can also use it with strings, You, which is the same story. If you were to put this in an array, it would look for 
an array with exactly person and cat without the brackets, it could be either a person or a cat to match. So in the comments, let me know if you have any of your own mind-blowing moments of simple things that you should have known 